On Alaska's west coast, the Inupiat Eskimo village of Shishmaref is at the sharp end of the western world's dependence on fossil fuel. The village sits on an island just a quarter of a mile wide, and for seven months of the year, they are locked in by sea ice, frozen all the way to Russia. But global warming has now melted the sea ice by almost 40%, which changes everything for the people of Shishmaref. The currents have changed, ice conditions have changed, and then uh, the freeze up. Uh, the freeze-up of the, the uh, Chukchi Sea out here has, has really changed too, to where uh, we used to freeze up like in the last part of October. We didn't freeze until that, around Christmas time, I believe. That ocean out there should be, uh, under normal conditions, four, foot, four feet thick. I went out, the ocean ice was only one foot thick. My mother, she made me a pair of polar bear skin mucklucks and these top are a wool ring. There's reindeer hair and seal skin on the bottom. These are excellent for extremely cold weathers, like for uh, 80 below, almost 100 below zero. The feet never get cold. Life here isn't just adapted to the cold, it depends on it. The thick blanket of sea ice is the villagers' hunting ground. Any changes affect the people's ability to find their food. While we're waiting for the shore ice to freeze up for subsistence purposes, all the game is traveling east. You know, we can't get out there. And it is affecting uh, the subsistence lifestyle of this community. Because last summer, we covered thousands of miles by boats, hunt, trying to get walrus, nothing, except for one boat. We found one walrus. With less sea ice to protect it, the village is becoming more and more vulnerable to the increasingly violent weather, also a direct result of climate change. The storms are they're getting more frequent. They're, the winds are getting stronger. The, the water is getting higher. And it, it's notice, noticeable to everybody in town, you know, it, it just kind of scares you inside, inside your, in, in your body. After a ferocious storm in 1997, three houses toppled into the ocean when the fragile ground beneath them gave way. Nine others were relocated by jacking them onto sledges and pulling them to higher ground. The government declared a state of emergency. We're, we're like in a panic mode because of uh, exactly how much ground we're losing. If our runway gets flooded out, there goes our evacuation by plane. We can't predict these storms. We can't tell what's gonna happen tomorrow, in other words. We just take it day by day here.